Hello furniture refinishing friends, I'm Shannon with Black Sheep House. Today's video we are really taking some trash and turning it into treasure. I'm talking damage, particle board, MDF, it's really destined for the dump, but we're gonna make it look like the centerfold of a Pottery Barn magazine. And if you've never been to my channel, I use a lot of texture with this technique and you're gonna love it because it's so forgiving and it works on any surface. I'm actually excited to give it to you guys for free. All I ask is that you subscribe. It means so much to my small channel. Yeah, I think you're gonna love it, but seeing is believing, so let's get started. Like always, I'm starting out by removing the hardware. I'm gonna be painting and using this exact hardware on this piece. I also removed these top two plastic things. They just unscrew from behind, just like the hardware. It's very easy to remove these. And then I'm gonna be using some wood filler to fill the holes and I'll be still using the original hardware. You guys know I've been so crazy about this Palmolive Oxy dish soap it works so well at removing grease and grime from furniture and this piece was especially dirty you're gonna see here as i start to clean this thing i don't know what was going on the inside of the drawers was actually pretty clean so i don't know if they had it in a garage or something but it was dirty you do have to after you clean it with the palm olive oxy dish soap see how dirty it was oh you do have to go back through and clean it with, wipe it down with a just like wash rag that has water. The legs were a little loose on this, so I went ahead and tightened those up with this tool. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I just steal all my husband's tools. He gets all mad because I don't put them back where they go. So yeah, let me know what tool that is. Some kind of wrench. Plastic wood is what I'm going to be using to fill the holes. My hack is that I keep it in a plastic bag and I heard from Pretty Distressed that you can keep it in the refrigerator as well so to keep it from drying out because when you buy a big thing of it and you don't use it very often it can dry out and you don't want to waste your money so just using a putty knife you can find these at the dollar store or at your hardware store. They actually have some um, spackle too at the dollar store but it's not quite as hard as um, plastic wood and then if you wanted to go one step further to fill holes you can also use Bondo which is like the stuff they use to repair cars but since I'm just doing quick little repair here it's not a big deal I don't need anything structurally sound on the holes I do like to sand it with a sanding sponge 220 grit seems to get the job nice and smooth. I'm going to be using my go-to primer which is Zenzer's Bullseye 123 water-based primer and you can have them tint this if you would like and I do that a lot on projects but I just had the white one on hand and went for it. So the water-based version, I've found that it performs really well and if you're not painting a piece white and you're not worrying about bleed through from like a mahogany type wood or something, this thing is just like particle board and plastic basically, which is why I'm painting it to look like wood instead of trying to sand it and make it you know, shine, showcase the wood. Um, this is just a really cheap piece of furniture, but we're going to make it look great. But yeah, definitely want to prime it. I'm just using my Zebra 2-inch angled brush and making sure to get the whole thing primed. Just one coat should do the trick. A lot of people are really scared to use latex paints, but that is why I prime. I really like using latex paints. And you're going to see here this Bare Premium Plus Semi-Gloss Enamel is a favorite of mine. And I... I just, I don't understand why furniture painters hate latex paint so much. I think it's because they don't want to do the prep. And so I don't mind priming and doing a top coat on furniture because I feel like, especially the top coat, I don't know how you ever get away without doing a top coat anyway. So, and it doesn't take that much longer to prime. So, and for the savings that you get, I just, I don't know. Somebody's going to have to sway me the other way, but... 
Um, I'm a fan of latex paint. If that makes me an outcast in the furniture painting community, then so be it. <laughs> I am um, using the color rugged tan. And if you watched the video that I did on this finish before, um, it's the Sausalito finish from Pottery Barn. And I did like some paint samples to match it. And I was kind of like a mad scientist for about two weeks before I figured out exactly what combination of paint color and stain or glaze on top and um, dry brushing really matched that pottery barn. And this is that exact combo. So lucky you. For me, this particular finish sells really well. And I know I've mentioned that before. Um, and it just fits a variety of customers, whether they like a more modern look or they like a French country look or they like farmhouse or if they're traditional, this Sausalito color really fits in like all those decor styles. So that is a win-win for you if you are trying to sell and it's awesome for you if you're trying to decorate your own home because it just matches so many things and goes with so many styles very timeless. You can see I've got like a little hair in there. I wanted to show that clip because I get hairs in my finish all the time because I have a dog, two dogs that are running around the house and all you have to do is just wait till your paint dries a little bit and then use your finger to just kind of peel it out. So again, wait till your paint is a little tacky and then you can get that hair out. To make your finish look the smoothest as it possibly can and the most realistic like wood, you want to go from one end of the piece to the other with your brush strokes. See, I'm going from one end all the way to the other. Even if I apply it first and just kind of get it on there, then I go back and smooth it out. I'm using this Rust-Oleum Decorative Glaze in the color Java Brown. I have a chip brush, a deck staining brush, and a whisk broom. You can find all these items at Home Depot or Lowe's. And basically what, we were, what we're gonna do here is use the chip brush to just get the Java colored glaze onto the piece. And then we'll be using the deck staining brush, which is like the square one, to smooth it all out. And then we'll be using the whisk broom to texture the piece. So first you want to you know stir it up nice and good your Java by Rust-Oleum um, glaze and then I've let this piece dry overnight. I have had people men message me that the when they went to do the whisk broom that some of the paint peels off and I've found that that happens if you don't wait for it to dry fully or if you use um, something lower than a semi-gloss that is more likely to happen. So now I always go with semi-gloss on this particular finish. So using the chip brush just to get the stain or glaze, I'm using those terms interchangeably on there. They, they basically work the same way, but a glaze is a little bit like thicker to work with than a stain is a little bit more watery. And gel stains, I've used those in past videos. You'll see that those work similar to the glaze. They're just oil-based, and so they're a bit stinkier and harder to clean and stuff. So I'm really leaning towards water-based products because, well, I think we all are. They're just so much easier to work with. Just getting it on there with the chip brush and then you're using the deck staining brush, which is the one I have right here. And you're going to go from one end to the other and smooth it out. And you can see it already makes like a really big difference in the way your piece looks. So it's really a professional looking finish. And I have found that the deck staining brush is the only thing that does that for me. So I have done this particular finish a bunch of times and I'm telling you, just do it exactly like I say in the video. <laughs> Sometimes it's great to be creative with furniture refinishing, <laughs> but I've found with this particular finish, anytime I try to like wing it and do something a little different, it just turns out ugly. So <laughs> let me know in the comments if you've tried this finish and done something a little different and it worked for you, but I've not been successful. 
<laughs> with doing it any other way. Um, all right, so or, or at least this is the way that it looks the best, I should say. So you're getting it on there with the chip brush. Just, you know, painting it on. It doesn't have to be super thick, but you don't want it super thin either. And then you're going to smooth it out with the deck staining brush, the big deck staining brush. Those are about $10 at Home Depot. And then you're going to go in with the whisk broom. Sometimes the paint will get a little heavy or the glaze will get a little heavy on your um, deck staining brush. You need to, you know, use, use it elsewhere to kind of dry it off. But so I'm going in with the whisk broom. And if you've been a subscriber to this channel, you guys know I do this all the time. The whisk room, go, go in with the whisk room. You might have to do this a bunch of times to get the look you're going for. And don't worry if the drawers are like a little darker in one spot, a little lighter. All that's going to add to the character and make it look more realistic in the end and give it that wood look. So don't panic. I do like to do this finish with the drawers in. It just works really well for me. Um, I've become accustomed to doing it that way. And I've also, um, I used to do the sides like vertical and the drawers horizontal, right? Like I'm doing horizontal right now. But now I do the whole thing horizontal, like the whole thing, the sides, everything. And it just makes it all look smoother. And I feel like it looks more expensive that way, so... That's just what I've been doing. This other little hack here, sometimes the spots are too small for your whole broom. You don't want to send your whole broom in there. You can see I got like a little mark where one of the bristles wiped it away too much. And all you have to do, you can either smooth it out again with your deck staining brush, because again, you've got tons of open work time, which means it's drying slowly. And, but what I did is just kind of smoothed it out with the whisk broom. And, and, and again, that little hack from the beginning, I'm just using a piece of the whisk broom. I'll just kind of like grab onto it and then use it. The next step that we're going to be doing, this is really the final step before you do a top coat, is a dry brush. I've said in other videos that this particular step is optional because you can see it, it already looks really good, the dresser. You could just clear coat it and call it a day, but I do feel like that this really elevates it um, and it doesn't take that much time and I've just, I don't ever not do it. Okay, so I'm not saying you have to do it to have a good looking piece, but I always do it. Um, and it's just this yellowy color. It's the color that they used to make all the walls in the 90s. <laughs> and um, it's like that creamy yellow color. And then I just dry brush it on there with a bigger chip brush. Dry brushing is a technique if you're not familiar with. Um, it's where you just barely get any paint at all on the tip of your brush and then you dab it onto a paper towel or a towel and then you brush it onto your piece. Here it is up close and you can see, you know, some spots are a little heavier, some spots are a little lighter. I try to just blend it all in. You can use a paper towel to smooth out some of the spots that maybe got on there a little bit too heavy but overall I feel like this step really just takes the piece up a notch you can see on the left side I haven't done the dry brushing and then on the right side where that corner is in the front you can see I've done the dry brushing so it like lightens everything up a little bit it just blends and I don't know it just really adds to the piece I think what do you think? Do you think I should leave it without doing the dry brush? Am I wasting my time? Let me know in the comments. So yeah, I just spray painted these black and then I'm using Metallic Antique Bronze by Modern Masters. 
I bought this at Hobby Lobby, but I think it's the cheapest on Amazon. It's like 10 bucks. And I just dry brush it on there. And then I use a paper towel to kind of dab it away. I personally like the like bronzy look, but you could just go with like the matte black too, or you could spray paint them gold. Um, your options are limitless. Okay, this is the most important step and the last step. It's going to be the top coat. We're using Varathane, polyurethane. It is water-based and it's a matte finish. They have several different finishes including satin and semi-gloss. But I like a matte finish because it is very forgiving to the eye. Um, especially like older pieces. You know, they've got some dings and dents. It is watery, that is normal. And it goes on like a milky white color, transparent white, and then it dries clear, obviously, it's a clear coat. So, yeah, I like to apply it to the edges first, working my way like out, and then I see how I do the edges, and then I'll go in, do the edges, and then I go across the middle. That just works well for me. I don't get as much drips on the edges. Okay, let's take a look at that before. You have to subscribe or I won't show you the after. I'm just kidding. But do subscribe, okay? I, I need you guys. I want you here. I don't want you to miss anything. So make sure you subscribe. And I'm guessing if you watch the video, this 16 minutes <laughs> video, that you're probably into this kind of material. And this is the stuff that my channel is all about. So... So happy you watched this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.